a lot of people in the South today can trace their ancestry back to this industry. A long time ago, in a longleaf pine forest, probably not too far away, settlers were coming up to trees and they were looking at them as commodities, ways to make money. Now, when you think of trees, you probably think of chopping them down and turning them into boards and planks and what have you. But these settlers were more resourceful than that. They knew a special feature of longleaf pines, which was in addition to the valuable, beautiful wood, these trees exude sap when you cut into them. In this case, it was used in an industry known as naval stores. They took the sap, they cooked it, and they were able to make all sorts of things, like things to waterproof sails, things to waterproof the wood on ships, and a really important product called turpentine. For uses ranging from medicinal to the manufacture of rubber and plastic, from the making of paper to the manufacture of textiles. They'd cut this way, they'd cut this way, and they'd put a piece of metal right here that the sap would dribble down and they'd nail into the tree and attach these clay pots. This is called a hurdy pot. This was actually used in this industry, found on the property. They'd attach this and the sap would dribble down into these pots. Well, as anyone knows, if they've cut into a tree, eventually the sap from a certain incision starts to dry out. So what people would do is they'd cut slits up here and sap would run, it would dry. Slits up here, sap would run, then it would dry. And eventually you get something that resembles the whiskers on a cat. That's how this got its name. These are called cat-faced trees and you can still find them on the landscape today as you explore longleaf pine ecosystems. Oftentimes the trees would die when you'd cut into it like this. I mean, look at this, this is a deep cut. And as the trees died, the industry moved. So it started out at the northern edge of the longleaf range in places like Virginia and North Carolina. And the industry slowly moved south as the trees were cut down and also cut into to get the sap. Now over time, the whole industry became kind of obsolete because synthetic products were used, ships weren't made out of wood any longer for the most part. This whole story illustrates two key points. One is that over time, people have been really, really tied to longleaf pines. I mean, there's whole towns in the South that were established around this species of tree. And second, it illustrates the resilience of this incredible species. Take this tree, for example. You can walk through a forest, come upon a cat-faced tree like this, and it's had a you know, three, four inch incision into it. It's still seeping with sap in places. It's, it's been cut into, it's been nailed. It's had pots hung up to it for years. And look at this one, it's even been burned. I mean, the core of the tree has been burned. And then look up there. It still has pine cones, it still has needles, it's still growing, it's still spreading its offspring through this ecosystem. It just takes a little bit of care and a little bit of effort to make sure that these ecosystems are around uh, for the next generation. It really doesn't take much. Wild Wander is made possible by the generous support of organizations that believe in the importance of the stories we tell. If your organization would like to talk about a partnership opportunity, contact us at info at macroscopepictures.com.